considering how similar Johnson & Johnson and AstraZeneca are, and considering the similarity between the EMA's review of Johnson & Johnson to AstraZeneca, should uh, health ministries uh, treat the vaccines differently? In other words, if we've got restrictions on Astra, should we also have them on Johnson & Johnson, or the reverse, if there are no restrictions on J&J, &J, should we consider lifting restrictions on AstraZeneca? I think the, the devil is in the detail, isn't it? So, so obviously they're, they're very similar vaccines and there have been somewhat similar adverse events reported. But, you know, I, I don't think we can kind of treat them as a job lot. I think we need to really, really keep reviewing the evidence very, very carefully. And for me, the bottom line is unchanged that, um, you know, as we're seeing in India and anywhere else, the risk from the virus is so absolutely huge and the risk from, from blood clots is relatively small and we just need to try and keep our you know our maths in proportion um because our only real answer is to get everybody fully vaccinated uh professor i'd like to go back to the the indian variant um yes. because again we don't have a lot of information about this particular type of mutation but there is a concern out there that it might it may prove resistant to the available vaccines that we have what is a, a reasonable time period to expect uh, for, for us to see whether or not this variant actually is going to be resistant to the vaccinations that are available? When, when can we find out uh, whether or not uh, it, these vaccines will work or need to be adapted? Sure. So, so all that work is underway at the moment, but I think we can have a fairly good guess from what we've seen from other related uh, mutations. So my guess is that... Um, countries where you've got a large population who've received two dose two doses of vaccine will be relatively safe so 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 in other words there'll be some immune evasion through this variant but you know but not terrible not back to square one on the other hand if you've got a large population who are either unvaccinated or as in the uk where um Although we're very you know, proud of the fact that 50 percent have been vaccinated, that's only one dose. I think that wouldn't be sufficient to keep this at bay. So, in other words, you know, quite a lot of vulnerability out there to it. But in the end, I think the vaccines can cope. Mm. Mm. Uh, reassuring, I guess, in some respects. Uh, talking about the UK, you mentioned that 50 percent of the population has received the, at least the first jab. What hurdle do we need to get to, to to reach herd immunity, given what we know now about the new variants and how transmissible they are? Well, you know, it's um, still a, a big challenge, but I, I think it's going in the right direction. So, um, you know, I think we need to be very tough on ourselves to, you know, to keep raising our game, you know, that, that herd immunity in this context means that in, you know, in all, in all the countries we're talking about, 80% um, plus of the population are carrying high levels of two dose vaccine induced immunity. Obviously, you know, we're a million miles off that at the moment, even in a place like the UK that's had quite a good vaccine rollout. Um, and until we get to that stage, you know, we're really not safe, but it's, you know, it's clearly doable. Mm. No, Professor, I think our, our viewers are constantly trying to assess what the path to recovery looks like and the pace with which um, people will get back out to doing activities and carrying on with normal life. And you speak to people, especially in the U.S., it seems, with families, with young children. Their chief concern now is how do they act in a world where their children are unvaccinated but the adults all around them are. Do you see a path to vaccinating children in advanced economies this year, or is that something that that we will have to wait until 2022 for, if if at all. I, I do see a pathway to that, and I think it will come, and I think it has to come, um, because you know we we know that children and, and adolescents are completely susceptible to being infected and transmitting the virus, and after all, we want to do our utmost to um, you know to get out of this and not be um, percolating it at a, at a kind of tolerated level for years or, or decades to come. So 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 I, I think it I think it has to come. Um, but, you know, it, it is a challenge. Um, you know, the US is now doing rather well. The UK is doing very well. But many countries, as we're seeing in India, have um, the vast majority of their population unvaccinated. And, um, you know, it's been said many times, but it's true. Um, you know, none safe until we're all safe.